Hi, Extreme Recap Today, Bill Williamson serves as the film's opening act. A youthful grown-up who lives with his folks and is baffled with the present status of the world. In the background, listening to the news. To manage his anger, he engages in physical activities like hitting a punching bag and throwing darts at human body illustrations to express his frustration with the nation's growing population, economic crisis, pollution, and wars. However, when Bill is having breakfast and talking to his parents, he appears to be emotionally attached to them despite his anger. During their discussion, in any case, Bill's folks communicated their anxiety about his absence of energy they recommend that he get ready for his own place. However, Bill is not yet prepared to leave his parents' house. He lets them know that it will require some investment for him to set aside sufficient cash after he completes his schooling, in any event, when his folks propose to monetarily support him. Bill appears content to remain where he is and declines their assistance. As they're getting behind schedule for work, Bill's mom, Mrs. Williamson recommends a family gathering at night to help resolve the. After that, Bill goes to a coffee shop to order a double espresso macchiato, which is his favorite drink. However, when he gets his drink, he thinks it isn't what he wanted, so he asks for his money back, much to his dismay. He is mocked and the clerk doesn't give him a refund expressing that it's the best cafe in the town. Bill is further enraged by this, and he is forced to leave the coffee shop out of frustration. In the subsequent scene, you can see Bill, a part-time mechanic, repairing an old van. He seems to be working hard, but his boss suddenly shows up and tells him to stop working on the van and start working on another car. Bill tells his boss that he's finished working on three other cars already. On the other hand, the boss calls him names and makes fun of him at work. Later after work, Bill meets Evan, his only friend, in a parking lot. Evan is a leftist philosopher with a different perspective on social norms and is concerned about overpopulation. Bill reluctantly agrees and sets the van aside to demonstrate that he is unhappy with the decision. He tells Bill that his father is skeptical about the boxes and almost caught him. Following this, the pair eats at a chicken din restaurant. There, Evan tries to flirt with the waitress, but it doesn't help matters because the waitress accidentally spills food on them. Evan gets angry and demands his money back, but the waitress refuses and offers to reprint their bill. Evan tries to calm his friend down because he can tell Evans is getting more and more angry. In the next scene, the situation eventually settles down, and the two friends have a serious conversation about the issues facing the world at the moment. Evan voiced his concern regarding overpopulation and its effects on the environment, arguing that those who contribute to the destruction of the environment ought to be eradicated. He then makes reference to the adverse consequences of overpopulation, for example, air contamination and the exhaustion of the ozone layer Evan relates need for change, however he neglects to give an okay solution to Bill's inquiries with respect to what sort of progress is required who will start it and what he will do as an individual later Bill blames Evan for being all discussion and no activity, which triggers a heated debate between them. A while later, when Bill gets back, he illuminates his folks that he has invigorating news for them, however needs to examine it the following morning, he then, at that point, goes into his room and starts gathering Kevlar reinforcement from parts he's gotten from Evan. Bill's parents, on the other hand, are intrigued by the news. So they tensely hang tight for recently inside his room as Bill works with wires. A video of Evans talking about his concerns about overpopulation and the need for action can be heard playing in the background. Bill, on the other hand, responds to the video with a chuckle, suggesting that Heaven might not agree with or take Heaven's views seriously. As he repeats Evans' philosophical species word for word, Bill appears to be desensitized to them. He then proceeds to print a significant amount of counterfeit money and starts working out, suggesting that he is involved in illegal activities or is planning something significant. The following day in addition to apologizing to his parents for his previous behavior and expressing a desire to have a purpose in his life, Bill informs them that he will be taking the day off from work to complete college applications for a major in mechanical engineering. After praising his decision, his parents leave for work as they are pleased to hear this. However, the true strategy of Bill emerges as soon as they depart. He takes out a weapons kit that contains machetes, various guns, and a wireless detonator. He dons armor made to withstand bullets, complete with a ballistic protective cap and paintball cover, making him seem to be an individual from a U.S. WA. 
As he presents before the mirror, we are shown a video of Bill examining natural selection hypothesis, demonstrating a potential confidence in outrageous philosophies. This conduct is disturbing and proposes that Bill might be wanting to make radical and possibly perilous moves in quest for his convictions. Bill believes that the survival of the fittest theory can also be applied to humans. He has become disappointed with the people who focus on their own requirements over those of society and he's likewise worried about the restricted assets accessible as an answer for these issues. He suggests getting rid of people who are a burden on society and using up resources without giving anything back. Bill leaves his house and changes his car's license plate in order to carry out his plan. He then, at that point, drives directly to the town community, where he finds the separated van that he had been dealing with in the carport beforehand, then utilizing a remote gadget, he lays hold of the van and drives it straight into the police division's structure, causing critical harm following this. He blows up the police station with a bomb he had hidden in the van. This makes it easier for him to carry out the rest of his plan while the police are out of business. Bill drives his car without a license and steers around the en route. He shoots at anyone he sees indiscriminately, causing panic and chaos in the area. Two police officers try to stop him, but their bullets can't get through Bill's bulletproof armor, so they die when they run out of ammunition. The public is in a state of panic and fear as a result of Bill's actions, and the authorities are rushing to contain the situation. While he continues to walk through the town, Bill revels in the fear and panic he has created among the people despite the numerous dead bodies scattered on the ground. The extent of the damage caused by his actions remains to be seen, but it is evident that Bill's plan is one of destruction and violence with no regard for the safety or well-being of others. He continues his ruthless rampage without showing any remorse. He seems to take particular pleasure in targeting establishments that deal with food, as though he is punishing those he believes to have more than they deserve. He even goes out of his way to visit the same coffee shop where he ordered the coffee before the bill. After humiliating the barista with whom he had argued earlier, he orders a similar cup of coffee with regret before the barrister can deliver it. He kills him mercilessly and leaves. Bill stops at a spa to rest and hydrate after his killing spree. He enjoys the fear he instills in the women there, so he talks to them for a while before leaving without harming anyone. The ladies are a piece loose and attempt to get back to business as usual anyway their bliss is brief as Bill gets back to the spa and fiercely starts shooting at them, referencing that they saw his face while he was resting and having food in the accompanying scene, Bill strolls into a jam-packed bingo corridor loaded up with old players and glances around. Incredibly. Taking into consideration, None of them pay any attention and simply continue playing their games. They are advanced age. Because he believes that they are already very close to death, he decides to let them live. Following that, he enters a bank to commit a robbery, effortlessly taking command of the situation like an experienced professional. However, he is forced to stop his outburst of rage and resentment when one of the bank employees bravely tries to take the bill down. Bill releases a vicious explosion in the bank killing guiltless individuals and cutting the throat of the representative who attempted to stop. In a frantic endeavor to save his own life, the bank chief in the end surrenders the cash to charge outside Bill burns down the phony cash he had made before as an emblematic demonstration to show how money adds to the issues in the public eye as he heads to his next target Bill gets a call from his mom, who anxiously inquires as to whether he's okay. Bill tells his mother that he hasn't left the house and pretends not to be aware of the chaos he has caused. Even though he makes a mistake and leaves a clue about where he is really going, his mother doesn't notice and begs him to stay inside. En route. Bill enters the chicken den to exact his vengeance on the waitress who had argued with Evan previously. After Evan calls Bill to express his disappointment at his tardiness and expresses his displeasure at his tardiness, he mercilessly kills her by shooting her in the chest. He is completely unaware of the devastation that Bill has caused. Evan is actually waiting for Bill to arrive at the forest to play the paintball game that they had planned. However, Bill goes to the woods. He discovers that a police unit led by Sheriff Melvin is returning to town when the police radio receiver rings while he is on his way. He decides to plant a massive bomb behind the welcome of the town as a result of this realization. While he waits Bill insists that Evan remained where he was, and in an effort to persuade Evan to stay, he uses trash talk and ambiguously tells Evan that he will kill him later when the sheriff and his associates arrive at the welcome sign. 
Evan calls him again to inform him that he is leaving, driving two cruisers toward the town's entry. Sadly, when they arrive at the sign, Bill explodes the bomb, which decimates one of the cruisers in any case. The sheriff and two different delegates endure the impact and seek after Bill into the forest there Bill stops his vehicle and cautions the sheriff and his representatives that they shouldn't follow him any further, yet regardless of his advance notice, the police kept on seeking after him, prompting a turbulent and ferocious conflict among Bill and the policing. Bill detonated his car when the sheriff and the deputies opened fire on him, killing two deputies immediately. He then fled into the thick forest, forcing Sheriff Melboyne to pursue him on his own. Unfortunately, the cruel killer attacks him from behind just as he reaches a little further and leaves him to die. Moving on, Bill moves through the forest and reaches Evan. Evan is shocked to see him carrying a lot of cash and starts asking where it came from. Bill gets angry and uses a stun gun to make Evan unconscious before giving him a gun. He then plots what is going on as a self-kill and takes out Evan with a cold and unfeeling disposition, shooting him directly through his skull by organizing Evan's passing as a self-kill and dressing him in a suit Bill involves him as a substitute to redirect fault from himself in the accompanying scene charge chooses to consume all that might actually create problems and afterward he returns to home base at home he sits on the lie on the couch and watch the news about the destruction while attempting to act normally. Soon after, his worried parents come home to check on him. Unaware of the terrible crimes he has committed in front of them, Bill tells them that his friend Evan has done everything and makes them believe he is afraid of everything. The evil deeds Bill has committed and the number of lives he has claimed are oblivious to Bill's parents. Bill moves on and begins to pack his belongings and money into the suitcase in his bedroom. In the interim, Evan's father's news is shown on the television in the background, who strongly opposes the government's arrest. Bill doesn't seem to be bothered by the news and continues to pack his belongings as he gets ready to leave. When he hears Evan's father yelling his name and blaming him for the chaos, Bill picks up his suitcase quickly and leaves his room to avoid a fight. Then, fast forward two years, Bill posts a video online in which he explains his actions and expresses his concerns about the problem of overpopulation and the limited resources in the world. He asserts that his actions were a solution to these problems, and he hopes that others will follow in his footsteps and take steps to preserve life on Earth. Bill does not show any remorse for his actions, despite the severity of his offenses, rather, he appears to believe that what he did was necessary. At the end of the movie, Bill encourages other people to take the same drastic measures to save the planet as he did. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.